What's happening? We back live America's Realest Podcast, live hip hop daily. D L G is always in the building and we have O T B Z with us today. What's good, y'all? How y'all feeling? What's happening? Shit, we chillin' finna smoke one. Just came from the studio. I feel that. Thanks for coming through. Shit, I, I appreciate y'all for having me. Yeah, for sure. So you said you in the studio, I know you in town from Ohio. Yeah. Where where so how is it first I wanna ask how has Atlanta been treating you? How long you been down here for? Uh it's like my second time. Uh I ran into True Brand Media, one of the people that worked for them when I was mm-hmm. uh come I was in the airport, I was coming back from uh open up from OGZ. Mm-hmm. And it was a blessing in disguise for real running into them because I've been balls of walls with no with no manager and shit, just doing a lot of booking my own shows, just doing hella shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe making a couple wrong moves here and there, you feel me? But just learning, but not not stopping at the end. So mm-hmm. running into them was just really what hard work, hard work pays off type shit. But they gonna turn. We sure. They gonna turn it. me up though on the marketing tip though for no. sure. Mhm. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that's what's up. So you said you was in the studio. Yeah, I was in there with Shawty Fresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, shouts out, bro. He just he just helped me evolve a little bit for sure. That's dope. Talk up. How how long was the session like? Um, it was from uh, three to seven. Mm-hmm. First went in. You know, when you first meet someone, you gotta you gotta get the vibes figured out. Mm-hmm. Kind of sucks. You go you about to pay for for sure. A Thirty minute intro. Mm-hmm. To get, right. get locked in. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you vibe with the producer. Sometimes you don't. But bro is a one. So that was T. Yeah, that's hard. Cause he, you know, Atlanta legend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. So. He, he, he helped me a lot, for real. Just a lot with a little bit of finding my sound. Mm-hmm. I've been a lot of all over the place as far as, like, I got some singing stuff that people like, you know what I'm saying? But then I got my, like, West Coast stuff that I've been mm-hmm. performing out in Cali. So really just kind of focusing on putting it on the on the one, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That one sound down. Mm-hmm. I heard a few of your songs. Um, we played one last night um, during the music review, Say What. I think that's your last. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm, I just the dropped latest. that. Just dropped a little single, keep my people going yeah. through this uh, little little phase I'm going through. I'm about to come crazy here soon, so try to give them something to keep the motion rolling. Mm-hmm. I so, just dropped a four EP with uh, Nuff the Pharaoh before that, mm-hmm. so I, I gave them a little something to word, word. Something work off of. Word. All right, so that one, the Say What single is a Cali vibe. What's the vibe of the EP that you were telling us about? With Nuff the Pharaoh? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely more Bay Area vibe for sure. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of used to stay up. Got a, yeah, I used to live out there when I was like, well, I moved out there when I was 18, so I moved to the Bay Area and I was out there growing weed and uh, I went to school at Oaksterdam. It's like that little weed school. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I remember when that, that first yeah, came that out. Thing yeah, that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like I was on top of the world there. I was 18, mm-hmm. just thugging. I was living life out in Cali. I lived in Berkeley, then I moved to, uh, then I moved to Hayward. Okay. And then I was really out there until I, I got in trouble. I got in trouble and did a little four-year rip. That's why I'm kind of stuck back in Ohio is because the whole parole situation mm-hmm. shit is definitely not where I want to reside. But for now, it's going to have to do. Yeah. I got to get a travel pass and everything to, to come out. But I feel that. Well, we're working to, right now. It's starting to get easier as they see I ain't on no bullshit. And I'm mm-hmm. really out here doing interviews, music, whatever the case is. You know what yeah. I mean? Every time I'm going out of town, it's for real. It ain't no bullshit. Yeah, no, nah, we're working for sure. So um, I, I'm interested. Um, what kind of beats did you work with with Shawty Fresh? Cause shit, I used to his. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I don't even know what you would call it. It was just uh, he studied my shit for a second and then started turning some shit on and it was like it was more ATL type of shit. I would say like mm-hmm. one of them was uh, trap beats type. Yeah, one of them then they had a little bit of the uh, the, Louis- the Louisiana type of uh, piano in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it had the 808s bumping. So yeah, it's gonna be tea for real. I'm I'm excited to excited to work with Bro more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so I was um we were talking about how I was reading your EPK and you were in the motocross yeah. before um you got into rap or were you doing it at the same time? Nah, I never shit. I didn't even start making music till I came home from the joint for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was younger though, I was serious and that shit. I was I was homeschooled for it, mm-hmm. uh, training, not really partying too much and all that, and then. Yeah. Uh, my mom's caught breast cancer when I was like 16. Sorry it was one of the situations that sport like it kind of like the it kind of like the uh, music in a little bit like how you gotta definitely just invest all the way into yourself and then hope it pays off. You feel mm-hmm. me? But that sport is kind of like investing in the kid from like five till he's 16. 
Yeah. A lot of shit can happen in between there. But it's one of the only sports that, like, the amateurs really get paid. Like, they assign, like, a Monster Energy deal. And, like, yeah. a little eight-year-old kid making guap, them they're feeding the family, it'd be a little bit different. Yeah. Because it's like most sports ain't allowed to get paid to amateurs, you know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. So, it's a different sport, really. It's kind of addicting. It's one of them things, like, you striving so hard to make it, then mm-hmm. it don't happen. So, it was one of them things. And we just Did- really didn't have the money to keep on going. Had a couple injuries and then. Uh, yeah. Just kind of fell off into the streets, trying to. Yeah, I feel then, that. But still trying to try to stay on track. But mm-hmm. then when I went out to Cali, it was just. It was back when it was like the gold mine for weed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers was tripping because I was out there legally doing it, but it wasn't like that anywhere else yet. So mm-hmm. right. my little greedy ass was taking advantage. Mm-hmm. Got ran up, paid the price. <laughs> no, nope, and that here we are now. You know what I'm saying? Making now, music. Uh, you got that behind you. Gosh. Nah, facts. Kept it solid too. Shouts mm-hmm. out to all the motherfuckers that keep their mouth shut. You feel me? Yeah, for, for sure. Three years was a bitch. That's the price of not telling no. Like, on, no funny, but we was watching Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. You know, you seen Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I had that. Jesse kind of talked a little bit, didn't he? Huh? You know, he did that camera. Oh he, yeah. He shouldn't have did that. That 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 whole little uh. That whole little thing turned up meth, I feel like. Like, it was like a meth epidemic after that. Mm. For real. Yeah, after like that they, shit started. They did it, right? That's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. They was looking from, for the blue shit. They be on that meth, boy. Mm-hmm. They be tweaked out. You go to jail or you in the joint, they all tweaking. This shit be crazy. But, yeah, I feel like that shit started back then. Yeah. Damn, they're at right around that time. Motherfuckers yeah. start getting some ideas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I'm trying to cook it up themselves. It's a cheap it's a cheap drug to cook up. Mm-hmm. So, them just... I, I heard some stories in prison, like, man, I was like, yeah, the ice is not for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it shouldn't for be sure. for anyone. Learn, you, <laughs> learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I cool the ice for mm-hmm. sure. So you got any um, further plans while you in Atlanta? Uh, I think we go home tomorrow. We really grinded it out the past, since I've been here Monday. We've been mm-hmm. working on my website, getting the whole website booked out. So Yeah, what? Way look official and get my bookings and shit. Mm-hmm. I got a show in uh, Columbus. I'm about to open up for Shorty Shorty uh, That's hard. on the 20th. So mm-hmm. just trying to get back and get ready for that for real. I got that you. on Monday. So you, you said you started right, You started doing music when you came home. Was you writing when you was locked up? I was writing poems, but I didn't really realize they were bars. Mm. I don't know what I was doing. I'd just be bored. Mm-hmm. You know, you get really bored in that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And I had a pen and paper a couple times. And I started... I started realizing they weren't really like I thought they was like a poem in my head. I'm not showing them nobody, but they were really like sequenced out little bars. And yeah. then like one of my actual like second songs, uh, it was called 18 Years. Like a lot of that, a lot of that song was from these little poems I found. But I just found them like after a year out, and I was like, man, I can put this together. And yeah, make like I was this. like thinking like, man, you ain't really no white boys out here like you. This really done some time like that, just going through some shit. I got like 10 years pro in my head, so like. Mm-hmm. It's like, this shit public information. You don't really got nothing to prove. Like, mm-hmm. you don't even got to be out here toting guns or nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, you done did this shit. Right. So it's like, you, you really in a good-ass green area to do this shit, you know? Because it's hard it's hard being a white white rapper in the, in right, the right. industry. You really, I feel like you got to go through some real shit to really, you know, even for people to believe, connect with the audience. Yeah, for people yeah. to believe you, for, for it to be, uh, like you said, mm-hmm. a connection. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have rapped before I went to prison, you mm-hmm. feel me? Because mm-hmm. I would say I, would, I didn't even know or understand black culture yet until mm-hmm. I went to the mm-hmm. joint. Because mm-hmm. I'd be the, one of the first people to stand up and say, like, a lot of it be white people in that system to be fucked up. And then it caused a lot of racism and shit. Because I seen some shit that made me, you know what I'm saying? Like, with my own, as far as you know, right. white people, so... There's a lot that I'm gonna tell as far as you know. Time goes on when I get more opportunities, but right. definitely the world needs needs someone to someone like me to speak up. Mm-hmm. The media, yeah, with my color to be like, nah, that's like y'all be fucked up and mm-hmm. tripping. Y'all mm-hmm. are acting crazy in there. You know what I'm saying? And once I got treated like that one time, and then how I get treated now with having a record, it's like now I understand. Like mm-hmm. these motherfuckers don't give you a chance. You right. know what I mean? You don't know the most the next person's circumstance or why they even was in there. They might have just been literally off the porch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I didn't know what that term meant, so I went and <laughs> I was mental. And I'm like, I understood. Yeah, like, for sure. You for was sure. raised with a family, bro. You yeah. weren't raised that yeah. way, so mm-hmm. you can't ever judge what the fuck they went through. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I just seen So like, how long have you been home? About two and a half years now. Okay. Two and a half. Okay. Years. Okay. Uh, at the end of the summer, it'll be three years. August will be three. 
it took me about a year to bust out my show. Then about a year and a month in, my dude, he had this studio. He he building one though. And then like, he was like, you ever rap before? And he was just like, just go in there and fuck around because there wasn't no one in there. And mm-hmm. it just started like that. Cause it was like, I did like a whole chorus and a verse, even though it wasn't all the way delivered right. He was like, you realize you just made like a whole song. You mm-hmm. ain't never rap before. And I was just like, no, nah, not for real. But it just, it just kind of went from there. Mm-hmm. I went through a lot of, you know, evolving, turning into the, to an artist because you know it's kind of hard just coming out of nowhere and being like yeah, yeah I rap sure, now sure. like, like since when yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh-huh. like since when like, you ain't been <laughs> rapping like mm-hmm. what let me hear something it's like all right yeah so i really had to start you know practicing my craft like you gonna really do this shit because i felt like it was meant to be you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so i was searching for something when i came home like what is it that i'm gonna really put my time into like you can you know you can't stay in the streets mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying this shit that ain't gonna end well so i was like you gotta do something so I started making music and then I feel like, you know, I got a good ass, you know, a lot of people just make music and just be talking. You feel mm-hmm. me? I feel like I got a good story to project. You feel me? A lot of people may be able to learn from it or, you know, maybe be going through some of the same shit. Cause a lot of people be, uh, I would say glorify that shit too mm-hmm. much. This shit is no fun. Mm, yeah. I got asked my pro officer when to leave. So, me? so would you say you make like pain music type? Uh, Nah, I like to be myself and still make turn up shit, but I got some of that depression music though. I do, like hidden, I, you can find it on Apple Music and shit. Like I got a whole little tape just like specifically for that, mm-hmm. that I dropped on time when I was on house arrest. Cause I went through some shit when I very first started making music. Like I say like three months in, I was like, shit was going good. My first video got 42K views. I had a future with Lil Jojo, uh, an artist from Alabama. And then, uh, my second song at like 62k views and then an 89k view so it was like all right this is for show what i'm gonna do then i did a show mm-hmm. and i didn't even get to practice or do like no stage performance shit just rock that shit so i was like all right you you gonna do this shit for sure then mm-hmm. i got in this car crash and uh they tried to say i was fucked up i had a concussion and they just played with me for nine months uh, mm-hmm. Like, over this misdemeanor, they had me on the box because I'm on parole. So they like, really, you should be in jail. Mm-hmm. You know, you're lucky you're not in jail. And it's just like this petty ass, you know what I'm saying, crime. They try to say I beat up the police. And then it all came out, that, you know what I'm saying? I got the charges all dropped. But they still hit me with like some stupid ass, like, I don't even know. It's like some misdemeanor they couldn't even do nothing about. Long mm-hmm. story short, it took nine months to deal with this shit. So I was on the box for nine months. So it held up a lot of shit. But I made a lot of music during that time. But yeah. I would say that's where a lot of that. <laughs> where a lot of that, some of that depression shit came in, for, I sure. Yeah. for sure. I so, definitely versatile, though. So how many projects you have released already? Uh, let's see. I got, well, I damn near have to add them up now. I got, uh, like, I got, like, two, uh, three EPs for uh, one album, and then, like, I think I got five or six singles. Okay. So I'm stacking them up. I'm trying to build a real live uh, catalog. That's good for two Working on some years. features and stuff mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Might get this feature with Shorty Shorty uh, in my city. So I'm just trying to build a catalog and yeah. make sure I don't do no songs with uh, no disrespect to no one. But I, I'm really out here putting in work. So if I'm going to pay for a feature, it's going to be someone up. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. strictly sticking to that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For That's sure. why you did a, um, a show with O3 Greedo. That's like the same type of Yeah, shout out to 3 right? man. I'm trying to, I really was trying to get a feat from him, but I'm just independent right now. The way mm-hmm. the shit was going, uh, I just, um, my funds, and they were uh, on the road, and they tried to get me to come to White, but I couldn't make it out there. Mm-hmm. But shouts out, bro, because they, uh, that was my first time ever getting to, like, perform in front of the artists mm-hmm. type shit. And, like, I thought they was about to trump me because they bring him in, mm-hmm. and my security, like, oh, damn, they're like, damn. It looked like they, they about to put him on stage right now. And I'm like, no, nah, we ain't going. We we bum rushed up there and they just like had a mistake. They were about to though. And then boom, I performed. So it was lit though, cause he got to hear it. And then I just uh, dropped this song with um, Neff the Pharaoh where I had said, uh, subs to my system like 03 Greedo. It's just a little quick bar. And I was like, damn, yeah. I, re- I repeated Perfect that time. shit so many yeah. times. It mm-hmm. was a uh, manifestation yeah. right into him, damn near. You know what I'm saying? They say speaking shit in existence. That shit crazy. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so we ran into him. I didn't get to really talk to him. But his video dude nodded at me when I was walking out. And, and we connected on IG. But uh, haven't got to do nothing to him. But shouts out to him because I know he's going through some through some shit like I went through. I know he's on papers and all that shit out, out on tour. So 
Yeah, you know, Shouts that's out what it's about. Here, It'll come back around. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. that's how that stuff works. I know? damn near got in that whole little mix of like, it's like a dream to me because I got to open up for OGZ, uh, Phoenix, 03. You know, it's like the new shoreline now, whatever. They mm -hmm. added that and Klon and all them. But um, yeah, that was lit to me because it was like, yeah, no disrespect to any other artist, uh, whoever's popping right now would have chosen mm -hmm. them over them. You know what I'm saying? Because that Cali scene, that's my that's my vibes. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you rocking with you rocking with Kendrick? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit's funny. Yeah. They uh it is, you they, know, they biting some, the wrong hand. Cali shit, yeah. You know. They biting the wrong hand. <laughs> Cali Cali be crazy. That's one thing I know when I lived out there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really hip to gang banging until I lived out there. They be on that for sure. Mm -hmm. They be serious out there. So like you say like you was homeschooled and stuff and you know, you stayed in a small town, so like I was always traveling with like motocross that was like crazy because mm -hmm. I was going like city to city and hitting all these cities and meeting all these kids through motocross because it's like a different type of like it's like a different type of world because mm -hmm. like you would think the kids is spoiled but yeah they, they parents got hella money but like to even win in that sport you got to be like training hella hard so mm -hmm. even if the kids spoil he's like got a schedule at least right. you know what I'm saying so it's like a different type of sport like you run into a lot of rich families and snobby families but you run into a lot of like out the mud like we trying to make it type of families mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean and it and the sports all on you that's why i fucked with it because i i hated team sports mm -hmm. we losing they trying to blame whatever I, i'd rather me be the blame it'd be all on me you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it was really good sport taught you a lot for sure yeah motocross is dope so were you a racer or you tri yeah facts yeah i just raced i didn't do no like freestyle or nothing like mm -hmm. that big jump stone and shit like we hit big ass jumps. Yeah. What's like? What's what was something hard about it? Uh, what? Like the sport. Uh, I say like damn near the endurance. You wouldn't be su you'd be surprised. Like it's like top three with most physically demanding sport. Cause mm -hmm. when you like get out there in the summertime, especially out here, this is like one of the main proving grounds for uh training. Is like Atlanta or not Atlanta, but it'd be like Macon. Mm -hmm. I used to come down here to Macon all the time. Yeah. Cause it gets so hot. Mm -hmm. It get high hot. And that humidity, what you want. And stuff, yeah, because yeah, so it'd be like them summertime. Lungs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, them summertime races be serious. So you think you wouldn't, you think you wouldn't be using as much strength, but like when you really hitting them jumps and hitting the turns, you got mm -hmm. big ass breaking bumps like this size of this. You gotta really brace yourself the whole the whole entire time. Damn near, yeah. like all them moto kids all got like six packs and got like they ripped up looking. They don't really work out, but they, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. But the training for that be different. You don't want to really bulk up because it's like. You need to fly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You'll literally get arm pump. They call it arm pump. But you see dudes that's like real bulky. They look like they about to be stiff. They look like they better fall off because mm -hmm. they shit so tight because you want to you wanna be loose. You mm -hmm. don't want to be like real bulky. You got to be one with the bike. Yeah, right. You want the like muscular endurance type mm -hmm. shit. So, yeah, it's a different sport for sure. Hmm. You definitely can't be like, uh, it ain't a sport for the soft, that's for sure. Yeah. I done like shattered my foot. I got a plate and four screws in my foot. I done broke both wrists surgery on this one mm -hmm. a couple of concussions broke my that, collarbone that's more definitely extreme point, than like mma definitely <laughs> to the point where my mom was like yeah i hate this like, right yeah <laughs> i love it but i hate it because i know you're happy but when i'm in the hospital bed she'd be like damn you gotta stop this shit. yeah i feel that that's crazy you feel like um like motocross like translated into your music at all uh no nah, not really yeah that's just a whole phase of my life that's like like it's like you being real good at basketball or something but that not having nothing to do with what happened mm -hmm. in like some street shit or real life shit or whatever you know right. what i'm saying that's how i look at it it's like as soon as that cut off in my life i went down like a it was like a whole nother chapter yeah and yeah i missed the moto days because i was more i feel like more a little innocent you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but then i look back now i'll be like damn so much shit happened Cause I won't be one of the people that perp and be like, yeah, I grew up in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shit just evolved that way. So I went from good to bad, like seeing both sides. So that'd be different, but definitely not the type to be, you know what I'm saying? In here yeah. saying I grew up in the hood type shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people in this music industry should be bullshit. You know, bullshit. And yeah, I'm gonna keep it all the way yeah. at one. And that shit still be lit. So I know, I know. Hey, it's a lot of people that grew up in the hood or that not even that didn't grow up in the hood that grew up even like suburbia you know what i'm saying but still lived the hood life you know what i'm saying no, or facts. 
even with it's mm. like ESTG. Like they tried to, you feel me? Mm -hmm. They tried to say some shit about him just because he played football. He was like football I know some kid, people yeah. that was around that because that's our area. You feel me? A little bit right. too far. Like he was coming down our our city a lot at the time. Got a couple features with some artists from our city, but he uh, he was definitely on whatever he was on. Yeah. You feel me? And they tried to say that just because it was football. Because he was mm -hmm. football. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's gonna be that don't mean a nothing. lot of people yeah. that's gonna. Uh, you know that's going to connect with you you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah i definitely think you got a story to tell yeah you know, nah, that's just sure. crazy the way they did me with my uh my little indiana case was crazy just because mm -hmm. i basically got six to four and a half years over a conspiracy to armed robbery i wasn't there i was in cali when it happened it happened in indiana and then got sold on and they were like yeah he's the reason why we did it it's his pounds of weed that we was you feel me trying to go get mm -hmm. back da, 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 da. we owe him so they're like looking at me like oh he's got all this power to have these kids go strapped up in this mm -hmm. motherfucking mm -hmm. house and, and tie his family up so try to make you out of toy yeah they made me shit. out to be like out a million dollar bond bro mm -hmm. it is yeah so they that raided was, my mom's mm -hmm. crib arrested her for some bullshit put her through some bullshit over nothing like yeah i would say this shit probably wouldn't even happen in, in another state you feel me mm -hmm. like and i got arrested with 10 pounds of weed in the mail in ohio like during all this, like, in a six month little time span, all this shit, because they didn't indict me right away. Like, I didn't even know I was gonna get indicted. So I was kind of running wild though, because like, these are all the kids I grew up with. Mm -hmm. My dad's involved in this shit. So it was like deep, you know. I already know, it's like, man, my parents probably about to get divorced over this shit. It was, it was super deep, so, yeah. It was, they, they pretty much tore our family apart though, you know what I'm saying, tried mm -hmm. to, you know what I'm saying. We still thugging it out, but yeah. it's pretty deep how they did me though. So it's yeah. like no bullshit. So yeah. I'll be able to trump the trump the haters here soon. When they yeah. hear the real story, they're gonna be like, damn, yeah. I didn't expect that. You yeah. feel me? It'd be one of the ones that catch you by surprise, you feel me? Hey, look, man, if anybody got something to say, you know, you tell them to come check in America's Realest Podcast. Uh, you know what I'm saying? saying. The show. This I'm is real honest. genuine. I don't feel like you trying to perpetrate to be nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't like, even be saying this on like some tough shit. It's more like just what I went through and then then Shit, one day when I blow up, I'm trying to make a change in the right way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. More likely just trying to say some so people get to know, but definitely not trying to glorify this shit. That's why I try to say, like, a lot of people try to, like, be tough about it. I mean, yeah, make you tough for sure, but you don't want to uh, spread that to the youth that that shit's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because my shit is destined for street shit or blowing up in some honestly something what i'm doing or like entrepreneurship it's, they make it hard for you mm -hmm. to even get that money to do that shit you're gonna have to do something because mm -hmm. that 15 an hour they try to pay you out when you get out of prison it's, it's insane mm -hmm. you know what I'm you can't be <laughs> you right. can't be for real like, i can't like, even move out yeah you know what i mean right. you just can't be serious like so i've had to you know figure out other hustles and shit i started doing turbo rental cars just you know hella shit but there's just shit you really shouldn't have to be doing you know what i'm saying just hella hella extra shit to to make your money right so yeah to get sure. your hustle on so i'm trying to glorify that shit not glorify it glorify that it's just not right you feel me not you know put yourself in yeah. that position a lot of these kids kind of going down the wrong road i feel like in our generation as far as mm -hmm. just some of the people they look up to they think that shit cool so we see young thug right now for a young thug, that's, that's, yeah. that's what happens when you keep it real. You, you know got that. a lot of idiots around you, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Boom, end up just like that, because ain't no one going. When there's football numbers involved, because it's crazy, one of the kids that told on me in my case, like, he had gotten in trouble, you feel me, with my shit before, like, before all this shit happened, but it was some small shit, you know what I mean? I thought he was solid, you know what I'm saying? Shit, they offered us 30, suspend five, 25 to 18. That stayed like that for, like, seven months, eight months in county jail. Mm -hmm. Boy, you going to see he's really going <laughs> to... You're going to see yeah. who's really down for the mm -hmm. cause. Because mm -hmm. I knew deep down we ain't going to get this much time. Ended up getting six for not telling. They all got like two, three years for telling. Some mm -hmm. of them still went to prison. It's mm -hmm. like, you dumbass. Mm -hmm. You're going to get your ass beat for the little ass time you up here. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck was you thinking? Yeah. And that's what happened. I want to go home. He like, he ended up riding out with the bus with me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> they did not just do that. Because really, they ain't supposed mm -hmm. to. So really, if you're like kind of smart, you like, man, I got to be careful about this. Because if you like fuck up you like the one that ain't the victim you crash out on him whatever they might fuck around send you like to the worst prison in the state just because you weren't even supposed to be with him then you did what you did like that mm -hmm. so I, I had to move careful about that situation like he was scared to death though so 
I fucked with his head for a long ass time. And then just let everyone just have a fucking free for all with him for real. Karma sucks, fuck it. Yeah. But I was in there getting time because I had to get home to my mom, so I was trying not to crash out. You yeah. feel me? I was be it, it it tested my patience in there. For I sure. got my fair share of fights and shit, but for the most part, I wasn't gang banging and I was trying mm-hmm. to stay out the way for real. For yeah, real. for sure, man. That's that's the way you stay out the way these days. Uh, yeah, you know. What you know I mean, gang bang. If I had eight or more, probably mm-hmm. I'd have been in there gang banging. But four is enough time to be like, nah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna turn this bitch into eight because mm-hmm. that's what happens in Indiana prison. They uh, they don't like. I went to Ohio prison and it was lit because I'm like, oh, and motherfucker talks crazy to me. It's it's up in this bitch. You guys just go to the hole for 10 days. That's it. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a different ball game. In Indiana, they going to take you. They take they take like 90 days from you for a fight. So it's like calling home to mind, being like, yeah, I just lost. Like, you know, I won't be home on this day. My out day just got changed like three months more. And she cut. And she yeah. asked why you say a fight or whatever. It's just yeah. like, damn, I can't keep doing this. So yeah. yeah. I just put myself not in posi- positions to... You know what I'm saying? Never got stood on in there. Never that. But it was more like I just ain't gonna put myself in that position. I stayed off the card table. No, yeah, ain't nothing wrong. Me? Yeah, for sure. All that sure. shit worked yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Read books. Got big as fuck. Kept the close homies. You mm-hmm. feel me? Wrote poems. When COVID hit rapping. though, mm-hmm. when COVID hit, it got a little. It was pretty reckless in there. I ain't gonna lie. That's when it got turned. And there wasn't no option but to be turned. They weren't even paying attention to us. It yeah. got pretty raw. It's just crazy. Yeah. COVID in prison was nuts. They weren't even feeding us. Some motherfuckers was getting hungry, getting mad. It was bad. Yeah, man, you you gonna be able to write a book one day? Mm-hmm. Nah, I could. For sure. Don't don't forget I said it. <laughs> That's what a couple of OGs would tell me when I was locked up. Like you gotta write a book about this shit. Cause it. Because it's really, it's a, a lot of story. people that have you know gone through your situation. Yeah. And worse. And you could prevent. You know. You got a message. Yeah, because damn near this generation, and I admit it's worse in certain areas with certain races getting tra- uh, targeted as far as it could be any race, really. But nowadays, when you get to the prison, you'll be like, wow, it's it's pretty diverse. And it's like, you know, it's not like I'd say like the old days where it's like you see a lot of Mexicans, you see a lot of white dudes, you see a lot of... You, you see just them there walks of all life, really. So it's just mm-hmm. like, damn, man, this shit's got to come to a stop. You know what I'm saying? At this point, everyone just needs to stand up. So one day, I feel like when we our generation gets a little bit older, it'll be easier. You know what I'm saying? But we got to get them old Karens out of Yeah. We got to get them old the Karens way, right? out the way. Boy, they got to get out of office. They be yeah. fucking the game up. Yeah, for sure. All right, so um, I know you just came, made some hot stuff with Shawty Fresh. You have plans dropping music, like, soon, in the future? Yeah, I'm gonna try to get this shorty, shorty feature locked in, mm-hmm. and then uh, drop that shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a secret for now, though. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I got a little team working with me now, so I'm trying mm-hmm. to, for the first time, bouncing ideas off other people, make mm-hmm. sure I don't make the right, uh, wrong move but i say we gonna we gonna come with some hot singles here some some for sure and do some real rollouts because mm-hmm. i've been uh my dropping strategies has been a little off i'd say so. yeah for sure you well it sounds like the music gonna get right the strategies getting right yeah everything's gonna come together yeah we're gonna be sure. on top soon all right for sure all right so let everybody know where to follow you at you can follow me on uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. It's OTBZ on all them. And Instagram, it's underscore OTBZ. Uh, active as fuck on TikTok. Active on Instagram the most. Uh, Facebook, I don't really mess with that much. Uh, so check me out. For sure, for sure. America's Real Podcast. Y'all tap in with D-Lo G. Live Hip Hop Daily. We out. Shouts out, shouts out LTL, ATL, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. For sure that.